Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke, original air dates June 23rd, 1957, and the title is Home Surgery. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. done directly. Oh, is the coffee made? That's what I need. Yes, boy. I didn't make much, though. Thought I'd better save a water as soon as I was made dry camp. Oh, how come you woke up so early this morning? Oh, I always do that. Soon as it gets daylight, my feet starts to sweat. Seems like when I'm just not sure I get up. That's as good a reason as any I got. Hmm. <laughs> oh, looks like we got company. What? Forest. No, right over there. Heading straight for us. Mm. Some cowboy, probably. I don't know. He doesn't ride like a cowboy. Well, that's just a kid, Mr. John. Yes, it is, isn't it? Sure does need a haircut. Well, I declare it's a girl. What could she be doing on here? Carrying a rifle, too. Ah, morning, miss. Yeah. Want to get on and have some coffee with us? Who are you, mister? I'm a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge, ma'am. Oh, a U.S. Marshal? Oh, that's good. It is? <laughs> Why? But I need help, Marshal. My daddy's awful sick. Oh, what's he sick with? It's his leg, Marshal. A horse threw him and his saddle both in the corral, and then it stepped on his foot. And now his whole leg's all funny. He's got a fever, too. My name is John. That sounds like... Yeah, I know, Chester. Tell me, miss, when the horse stepped on him, did it cut his foot? Did it break the skin anywhere? Oh, it is just a scratch. It tore his boot off, though. Oh, please, please come and see him. I- I'm scared the way his leg is and everything. Oh, sure, sure would come. Is your mother with him now? I don't have a mother, Marshal. Oh, well... Then what are you doing out here if your daddy's sick? Well, we ran out of meat about three days ago, and I don't have anything to feed him. Oh. Uh, Chester, I'll ride back with the... Uh, what is your name, anyway? Tara. Tara Hawtree. Oh. I'll be 16 next January. Well, that's fine, Tara. Uh, Chester, we'll go back to the Hawtree place. You scout around for some meat, huh? All right, sir. And if you don't find any antelope, shoot the first calf you see. Anybody's calf. I'll do it, Mr. Dillon. Dillon. Yeah, I've heard of you. You're from Dodge, ain't you? Yeah, that's right, sir. Well, Marshal, ain't feeling so good. My foot don't hurt me no more, but it my leg is all sort of, well, it, it, it ain't pretty. Oh, Daddy. I, I don't know much about these things, Mr. Hawtree, but maybe I better take a look at it anyway. Sure. Sure, Marshal. There she is. Yeah. 
Yeah, all right, she can cover it up. I was in the war, Marshal. I know what gangrene is. Guess you do, too. Yeah. Well, the first thing, Mr. Hawtrey, a friend of mine's out getting you some meat, and then we'll load you into your wagon. Oh, Ben took the wagon. What? Ben Marlin. He took the wagon when Daddy got hurt. He said he'd find a doctor and bring him back. Well, who's Ben Walling? He's been sort of working here, Marshal. I should have run him off long ago. That's what. Well, where is he? Where'd he take the wagon? Was he going to find a doctor around here anyway? The closest doctors in Dodge, I know of. But I couldn't get to him anyway. Tell me, Mr. Hawtrey, when did this happen? About six days ago, Marshal. Ben left the day after. Uh, well, do you think he's coming back? He come back here. Me not able to get around. I don't know what I'll do. I ought to take a bullwhip to him. A bullwhip. Now, take it. Yes, take sir, it easy, I... Mr. Hawtrey. Take it easy. Now, he won't cause any trouble, so don't you get all worked up about it. Tarrant, uh, let's let him get some rest, huh? All right, sir. Now, we'll have some food for you real soon, Mr. Hawtrey. I ain't very hungry. Tara? What's he so riled up about this Ben Walling for? What's between them? Oh, it's, uh, it's nothing, Marshal. Daddy's sick and... That's all. Uh-huh. Look, uh... Tara, you trust me, don't you? Daddy hates Ben because Ben... Well, Ben likes me. Oh, I see. He even wanted to marry me. He said he would. How do you feel about Ben? Do you like him? Well, it's... It's time I had a man and all that, but... I, I'm afraid of Ben, Marshal. He, it's like there's something wrong with him. He's always... Sneaking around when you don't expect him makes me uneasy like. Marshal? Yeah? I'm awful glad you're here. smoke and looked out across the flat distances of the prairie and wondered how anybody could survive in all that emptiness. Caught tree lying on his bed back there in the house, he wouldn't survive. The prairie had got to him, all right. And Tara, what could she do out here in this endless land of grass? Well, I was glad to get my mind off it when Chester rode in with an antelope across his saddle. We hung it on the corral and dressed it and took a hind quarter into Tara, and we went back outside and sat out on the porch. It's bad, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, it's blood poisoning, Chester. As soon as it reaches his heart, he's done for. Ain't there no way to stop it? Yeah. Sure there is. Cut his leg off. Too bad Doc ain't here. Yeah. But would that stop it, Mr. Dillon, cutting his leg off? I don't know, Chester. I don't know. Maybe it's too late anyway. Well, I sure do wish we could do something for him. I don't take the sitting around just waiting for a man to die. Nobody does. It ain't right somehow, that poor fellow. And and Tara, why, Mr. Dillon, that girl will go crazy out here all along. All right, Chester. What do you want me to do about it? I'm not a doctor. I just shut up. Well, I... Mr. Dillon, you could do it. Mr. Dillon? I know you could. Do what? Be a doctor. Long enough to save Mr. Hawtrey's life, anyway. Oh, are you out of your head? Uh, No, sir. Then what are you talking like that for? The most I ever did was doctor a horse for the colic. That's fine training for... for this, isn't it? I know, but I couldn't do it. I, I just plain don't have the spirit, but you do. Mr. Dillon, you wouldn't ever just stand by and let a man die. Let's go talk to him, Chester. 
Кашем сидел. Doctor, anything wrong in that? No, not at all. Where is he? Well, first night, them horses run away. I've been chasing them ever since. Didn't catch them till this morning. I see. How's old Hawtrey? I was kind of worried about that foot. Looked to me like it might have poison in it. 
It did. You mean it did? I took his leg off about noon today. You who? How'd you know what to do? You, you might have killed him. Somebody had to do it, Ben. It's a sure thing Terror couldn't. Blaming me, ain't you? I done everything I could. It ain't my fault them blasted horses run off. Our tree's pretty sick, Ben. Hmm. Well, Marshal, you can leave now. I'll handle everything. Here. We'll leave as soon as Hartree's able to take care of himself. Again. Stay as long as you like. I don't care. Mr. Dillon? Yeah? I think that cussed Ben's a no-good liar. You see that saddle over there, Chester? Yeah, well, that one's Mr. Hartree. Yeah, I know. I looked at it this noon. Somebody cut the cinch strap on it. But no wonder that bronc bucked him in the saddle off bull. Do you think Tara did it? It was Ben, wasn't it? You figured the old man would get hurt, maybe killed. But why? So he'd have a free hand with Tara. Well, that miserable lowdown. Mr. Dillon, let me rest him. No, not yet, Chester. There's plenty of time. All right. I'll wait. There wasn't as much time as I'd figured. Autry had a bad night, and by morning he was so weak he couldn't lift his head. I tried to take his pulse, but I could hardly find it. Maybe I'd operated too late. Maybe the poison had already moved up into his body. I, I didn't know. I had no way in, though. Want some more coffee, Mr. Jones? What? Oh, yeah, 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 Chester. Fill it up with you, please. That poor Terry just won't eat nothing at all. Just sets there by his bed. Ain't slept a wink, I know. Of. Well, it's her father, Chester. He's all she's got. Marshal. What? Huh? Please, please come. Yeah, what is it, Terry? Daddy wants you. I think he. Come on, Chester. Yes. It's Matt Dillon, Mr. Hawtrey. Marshal. I'm going to die. Oh, Daddy. Teddy, please. Tara, don't leave her here. Ben Walling, he's no good. Now, don't you worry about Ben Walling, Mr. Hawtrey. I promise you that he won't get anywhere near Tara, now or ever. Tara can't stay here alone. It's a bad way to die. Not knowing. Mr. Hawtrey. Not knowing. Mr. Hawtrey. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to listen to me. I'll take care of Tara. I, I'll see that she's all right. I, I'll see that she's cared for. No, I promise you that. You hear me? I thank you, Marshal. I sure thank you. Where's Tara? Oh, Daddy, I, I'm right here. Daddy, please. Tara. Come on, just. I could hurry in there and just break in her heart. I'd give her a little time, Chester. She'll be all right. Don't move a finger, either one of you. Ah, oh, you're mighty careless with that rifle. Don't get smart man. with me, Marshal. I know what I'm doing. Oh, and what would that be? I heard you in there. Promised to take Tara away. I was right by the window. I heard it all. You got a curious way of courting the girl, Ben, trying to kill her father. Yeah, and I saw you yesterday looking at that saddle. But I didn't kill him, Marshal. You did. That's a lie, Ben Wong. Oh, you, you know it. I won't shut up. 
We just got here sooner Mr. Dunn would have saved him, that's well, all. Well, too bad you got here at all, because you're going to die for it, both of you. Put the gun down, Ben. You're under arrest for attempted murder. Stay right where you are, Marshal. You know, I got an idea you've smelled powder before, Ben, and that you're afraid of it. I got an idea that's Marshall. why you tried to get Hawtree like you did instead of facing Stop him. Stop right there. And right now you wish you didn't have that rifle at all, don't you, Ben? Because no. I might have to shoot you for no, it. No, don't, Marshal. Give me that. Stop, <laughs> You all right, Mr. Dillon? I didn't even try, Chester. The rifle went off when I knocked it aside, that's all. He was scared to death. Well, I didn't feel exactly comfortable. Tie him up and keep an eye on him, huh? I'll go see Tara. Late that evening, we buried Haw Tree out on the prairie, out in the back of the little homestead that would die now, too fall apart without him. The next morning, we loaded up everything we could get into the wagon, and with Tara beside me, we started off for Dodge. Ben Walling never said a word. Chester led his horse, and they rode along ahead of us. I had plenty of time to tell Tara all about Dodge, and how that there were some good people there, and how we'd find her a home and a family. She just sat there, tight-lipped. Didn't say much. She never once looked back. Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.